Right, hi guys. So, just another quick chat about the A7R5 uh, from Sony. Uh, I have noticed today, well, obviously they've released a little bit of teasing, the Alpha is coming, October 26th at 10 a.m., 1500 hours UK time. Um, yeah, so obviously 61 megapixels. We still don't know if the sensor has been fully redesigned or if it's the same as the old sensor, it's just got better noise reduction and stuff like that built in, who knows. Obviously, I know it's already got a better autofocus system, bordering the A1, uh, going by what I've been told. Um, this has now got some AI deep learning, so basically it should learn things as you start to use it. It starts picking up on things that you, you know, you photograph. Um, 8K 24p cropped, apparently, but 4K 60 um, full readout, and a few other options, obviously. I don't know if it will do... 120 frames per second in HD or 240 frames per second in HD. I don't know. Uh, we'll shoot video 8K 30 for 30 minutes uh, without overheating apparently. <laughs> uh, S-Cine tone is available. 8-stop IBIS. We don't know if that's including a lens attached. Uh, pretty mad. Um, but hey ho. That's very helpful considering the more megapixels you've got, the more it will show up your bad techniques. So if you aren't particularly steady or if you get your shutter speed wrong, stuff like that, a, a high megapixel camera will really show up. You didn't get it right, you know, uh, compared to a say 24 megapixels, you can get away with it. So having that extra eight, well, extra eight stops of IBIS as such, um, makes a huge difference. It really helps, uh, you know, do stuff like that. Um, I was watching a guy the other day who had a Hasselblad, one of the Hasselblads with, had, I think I had something like seven or eight stops worth of, uh, Ibis basically, and um, he was doing up to one and a half seconds, I think, handheld on a hundred megapixel medium format sensor. So you know, if that can be done, that that's pretty crazy. What a lot of people aren't liking is the fully articulating screen. Um, the idea of that. Some of the guys that have been commenting on the video uh, that I put up, they're saying that they don't want a fully articulating screen. You know, they're not TikTok boys who will be shooting in portrait all the time. You're doing a lot of landscape and stuff like that. Um, so you don't really need it. To be honest, I don't ever, because I've got the resolution, I rarely actually, I shoot like that most of the time. I rarely shoot in portrait because I know I've got the resolution to crop in portrait if I need to. Um, but it's totally how, we, how you want to use it, you know. Um, if I'm in a studio, I will be shooting uh, in landscape generally. That thing there, um, and obviously the body looks a bit like the A7S III, A7 IV, uh, as a mixture apparently. Um, one thing that's really interesting though, and it's something that I would be very interested in, especially if you do products um, or high-end landscapes and things like that, is the new pixel shift function. So they've updated that and it's now got movement correction. So if you shoot with the A1 or the A7R4, the A7R3, the A7R3 can do, I think, 160 megapixels. The A1 could do 199, and the A7R4 could do 240. When you actually put the pictures together in uh, Sony Imaging Edge software, and it combines them, the images can be insane. Like the detail is is just nuts. Because um, what it does, is it moves the moves the sensor around as you take pictures. So basically, it then combines the overlap, giving you much much higher resolution. And it does work extremely well. One, it reduces noise. Two, it reduce, well, gives you higher resolution. And if you're using large um, file format uh, printers, like a five meter high res printer, for example, it means you can print massive at full res. So basically, you could put up, I don't know, you could almost do a wall and go and stand up and get, look at it, and you'd be like, I can't even see the pixels. It's mad. Where in the old days, you'd be looking at printing and standing 10 feet back so you couldn't see the the actual pixels as such. If you go too close, you see the distortion of the image as such. So it's it's amazing uh, what you can do. But now if they've added the movement correction into it, it's going to allow things outside a lot more. So if you've got trees moving in the wind, uh, water moving, or if you've got um, a bird that comes into shot, or if you've got um, clouds cruising across the sky, if you do that now on the A1 or the A7R4 or the A7R3, it just confuses the crap out of you and you end up with this mess. And it's really frustrating sometimes that, you know, you, you have to do that, you know. Um, so it kind of, you know, you kind of stay away from it. 
real world, do I really need more than 50 megapixels? No. Do I really need more than 61 megapixels? Not really. Um, but very occasionally you might be printing massive um, billboards, you know, uh, and a lot of people still do um, quite a lot, you know. So that's that's a very, very good tool. A lot of people would never even use it. And some of these cameras, I mean, even the A1, there's just a lot of stuff on there I've not even looked at yet because I just don't use it. Um, I need to have a little bit more of an in-depth look than some things because I might start using those now. But, you know, it's like 8K. Do I need 8K? Not really. What I do enjoy on the A1 is 4K 120. And a video that I'm actually just going to put up later on, when I've put it together and just talked about it a little bit, is the 240 frames per second on the A1, the HD. So that's a really helpful thing. It's just a bit confusing getting into that. You have to, by the time you set it up, it's just annoying. But other than that, they're the things that I kind of use. So I use high res images, 50 megapixels. I have started using, um, I don't know how everybody else shoots, but I have been shooting 50 megapixel raw with a 12 megapixel JPEG. So the small JPEGs are handy for just going on the internet and stuff like that. And it's still a good quality image. Um, but it's much easier to work with like four or five megabyte images um, if stuff are going to go on Facebook or Instagram and stuff like that. So for companies and stuff, it's very, very quick and easy for them just to upload. So that's that's a really helpful um, thing I've started using. Never thought I would, but, you know, um, it's sort of things you change as, as you sort of do things. Um, but yeah, so it's still going to be very interesting to see what else this camera can do because... There will be 40 or 50 changes, but there'll be discrete little ones, like little tweaks here, little tweaks there, that you won't even see and you won't even realise it's doing it, you know. So it's not just a case of they've just changed the whole camera, they've done two or three different things, they've done loads of little tweaks which equate to something big. It's like race cars, isn't it? They do the little adjustments all over the car and it creates a massive difference when they drive the car. So, yeah, there's a lot involved with that. Um, but, yeah, so... What do you reckon? Is it something you use? Do you ever use the pixel shift or have you used the pixel shift? Someone wrote the other day that, I can't remember the name, sorry, um, about the uh, pixel shift that confused them, how to do this and the other. Um, I had, and this is where I think my A7R4 was broken, um, is where the sensor wasn't aligned properly or something like that. When I did pixel shift stuff, it was crap. Every time, it didn't work properly until I couldn't get a sharp image. So I think my sensor and I think some of the other sensors um, with the software alignment, when the software is put on there, the calibration, the meaning that the sensor wasn't quite right, hence the autofocus issue and all the other things as well down the line. Some cameras were fine, um, so hopefully with the A7R5 we don't get any of those troubles because there has been a few with the A7R, uh, sorry, the A7R4 and A7 IV, so hopefully not in that issue. Um, hopefully not on the new camera anyway. A1's totally fine. I haven't had an issue with that whatsoever. Um, but anyway let me know what your thoughts down below don't forget to click the subscribe button little notification bell as well and yeah just another thoughts it's not long now until this thing gets released as such um, and it is going to be interesting to see what the actual images are like out of it I'm sure they're just going to be amazing we're so lucky with all these cameras now everything from the A7R2 the image quality and that is still amazing um, all the way through and things have just got faster and faster and faster and faster image quality has got better obviously uh but we've had more choices, the higher frame rates and also the, the faster buffers and all those sort of things really equate to something better. Um, it doesn't mean the older cameras are any uh, rubbish. It just means you're getting a faster camera um, with slightly better image quality every single time we move along. It's a bit like mobile phone situation, isn't it? They keep moving on and on, but it's only small amounts, you know, in, in the real world. So, um but yeah, still, it's not going to be cheap. I think it's somewhere around about three thousand eight hundred to three thousand eight hundred ninety nine pounds in the UK. Um, around the world, I can tell you what the the dollar rateage or whatever is um, is going to be. But that's the price that's going to be um, around that area because the previous camera, A seven R four, was three and a half thousand. So it's going to be up up towards the four thousand pound mark now. Um, so it is a big outlay for a lot of people, um, but it's going to be good. That's what I can say. It is a very, very good camera. And if it's pushing its way towards the A1 a little bit in some areas, that's it's great, you know. Will I be buying one? Maybe as a second body? We don't know yet. We shall see. Because um, the work and stuff I'm doing now, I could probably do with a second body now rather than just the RX10. Um, the A1 is still the workhorse. Um, 
but who knows. Uh, anyway, I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts, like I said, and I shall see you soon for another video.